We're here with Mike McConaughey, the Demon basketball coach, who uh, is uh, very ready to have a road trip that seemed a never-ending end this week with games at Southeastern on Thursday and UNO on Saturday. And coach, your team came within a few seconds of a landmark win by ending one of the nation's longest active winning streaks. Um, great comeback, great game at Stephen F. Austin, but not the final score you wanted. Uh, talk about uh, that performance. Well, I was real pleased we came out. We did make a lot of turnovers in the game. In the, pers in the first half, we made several, but a lot of those turnovers were aggressive turnovers because we were trying to get the guys to really push the ball and run the floor, and we made a lot of mistakes. As I told Daquan Hicks, I said, you know, I can live with some of the mistakes we made because the fact that we were trying to attack. Um, and did a good job, had a lead at halftime, uh, come back out, and, and they just really played extremely well during a stretch. And then the last nine minutes and I think 38 seconds, we held them to, to um, six points until we got to the last um, 28 seconds and uh, did a great job, came down, back from 60 to 48 um, on a 15 to two run. Uh, did a phenomenal job defensively, offensively, had some good things going for us. And then we just didn't guard the last two plays. Um, some people would say, well, you turn the ball over with three and a half seconds to go and they scored. If we get one out of two stops in the previous two possessions, the turnover, we wouldn't have been able to have a turnover because we would have been in a position to win the game. So I go back to the lack of defensive stops that, that hurt us. Um, just a really great atmosphere to play in. I'm sorry that for the people that were there, they had a great chance, Demon fans, for those that weren't there, I'm sorry that they didn't get to attend because it was an outstanding basketball atmosphere. And the beautiful thing about it, it really had no impact on our players. Uh, and that goes back to the fact that we play so many games in very hostile environments, um, huge venues. Uh, on the road early in the season, and we just kind of kind of went out there and played. If anything, I think it was a positive for us because you enjoy playing in front of people. But really pleased with the effort of Jalen West. Gary Stewart had a, had a good game. Daquan Hicks did some nice things as well. But uh, just disappointed we lost, but there seems to be a resolve that we need to pull together. We need to do the things we need to finish, to finish strong. I feel real good about the atmosphere. Um, of the team right now, the general attitude. Um, as I met with our team yesterday and talked with about seven or eight guys, I said, it's going to be you guys that are going to make the difference. And you got to be mentally tough. you got to come in. you got to get better every day. And that's the guys, basically, you want to get in a number deal from five to, to 15. You know, those are the guys that are going to make the difference. And uh, we've got to rebound better, and we've got to be able to score the ball a little bit better to be able to make a nice run. Well, you've had some of those second wave guys, if you will, not your top four scorers who have stepped up their play recently, and that's got to give you a strong sense of encouragement. Yeah, I think that one of the things that you have to factor, and you go back to January, and Gary Stewart was about 20 percent. Marvin was about 20 percent, and Marvin didn't have a great game on Saturday on the boards and everything, but didn't make two huge free throws within the last two minutes of the ball game that were big, and, and so they're stepping up and playing a little bigger. Ryan King, a guy that's stepping up and playing a little, little better, didn't have a great weekend, so we expect a great weekend out of him this weekend. But uh, So they've done a nice job. Patrick Robinson has played a lot more consistent on the defensive end and had seven points and I think three or four rebounds as well and uh, did a nice job as well. Here we are at the end of February. Your team is 7-2 and two in its last nine games, the two losses both in the final seconds, one possession games. Um, I think it's safe to say you've got them playing the way you'd like to be playing at this time of year. We do, but we also need to understand that we need to get better from this point forward, make improvement this week, make improvement the next week, heading into the conference tournament. Uh, that's where I think sometimes that we lose sight that you want to be improving up until the final opportunity to go out and play, and that's one of the things that I think that our program's done a really good job of over the years, finishing in, in the championship game seven out of the 14 years that I've been here at Northwestern, and we're just hoping we can make it eight out of 15. All right, one thing that's not related to the on-the-court uh, excitement, uh, Bryson White in the uh, Dark Horse Dunker contest, the second week of that, and he's advanced into the second round. Uh, that's 
and a, another exciting opportunity for the program. Well, just excited because Bryson's a quality young man with an with a unusual skill set, 5'10", and can really, really be a high flyer. I hope people will really support him and go and um, vote for him. And that's important because that's another opportunity for our name at Northwestern State, just not Bryson's name, to get out there and be a part of something on a national um, level that uh, elevates our program to the to uh, the level we want to try to be at. We want to be a program that people know about us. And we've got several categories that we score really high in in basketball, for instance, the most possessions, uh, second in scoring. And so this will be another opportunity to get uh, recognition nationally, and that's important. Does Bryson take any advice from you on dunking? Not really, you know. I mean, I, I could probably work with him some if he'd like, but, you know, I mean, kind of let him do his own thing. Of course, say he looks at me and doesn't understand that I used to be a little bit of a high flyer myself. <laughs> okay, let's talk about flying high down uh, to South Louisiana during Mardi Gras season. Uh, the Demons Thursday at Southeastern and uh, Saturday at UNO, first the uh, Southeastern Lions, uh, Always a great in-state rivalry with them in basketball. Uh, talk about the challenges and the only meeting this season between these two teams. Well, Southeastern is, is a very good team. They've got Michael Hawkins and Dre Evans that are very, very good play. And Ui Ucho, I can't really pronounce it, very, very good players. But um, they do a great job. But they're playing a little different as well. They're playing a lot of zone. They played 40 minutes of zone the last game out against UNO and playing a lot of zone, a lot of 2 three, some one three one. So. Uh, a little adjustment there, and the fact that we're playing a lot of zone, it's a little adjustment on the other side. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, that this game uh, develops because we're both playing different than we normally do. And then Saturday, uh, you go to the first conference meeting with uh, UNO in New Orleans, and uh, in addition to a team that's certainly shown that it is very competitive in the conference this year, it's a team coached by your longtime assistant, 11 years on the bench with you, Mark Schlesinger. Uh, so that both uh, presents some challenges from a basketball perspective and obviously always the uh, emotional end of it uh, you've gone through coaching against Coach Simmons for years. Well, I think the biggest thing there, excuse me, is that um, you have the opportunity to play a team that is well coached. And uh, as Coach Simmons told me a couple of weeks ago, it's kind of like playing Northwestern. So I'm going to be kind of like playing ourselves. I mean, we'll do some different things, I know. No, he's got some zone attacks that are a little different than what we do, but it is a great opportunity. Really proud for him because he's really done a great job and is, is having a, a great year. Has had great wins, went out to UTEP and won. Um, somebody that we couldn't beat. And he's been very, very competitive with one of our former players, Corey uh, Dixon, who's now been there and is one of his lead leader, leader, I believe, in rebound. Has done a really nice job with him and uh, just uh, it'll be an exciting matchup. Uh, they are very, very hungry. He has them playing uh, at a very, very high level, and it'll be a very, a very difficult task to play him and his team. You'll be in New Orleans playing basketball. There'll be Mardi Gras parades going on. Going to catch any beats? Uh, it's going to be hard to do that since we're staying in Hammond because we couldn't afford the hotel rooms in New Orleans. <laughs> Get some king cake? Maybe some king cake. Not a bad plan. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, we're here with Williams basketball co-head coach Brooks Store And, Coach, you played us a fay last week. It didn't quite turn out the way you wanted, but just talk about the game a little bit. Well, we knew going into the game we were going to have to play extremely well. Brandon does a great job with his, his team, and I uh, knew that they would be prepared for us. It was their turn to make adjustments after we beat them the first time. And, um, felt like they were more aggressive than we were. Um, thought we got off to a great start. Our kids were ready to play. Um, started off 6-0 and um, were really attacking. Um, they like to play a pressure style defense and get out in passing lanes and really try to take you out of your offense. And um, I thought we attacked our, their pressure with pressure by putting the basketball on the floor and getting by them and getting some good post looks. And um, for whatever reason, we went away from that. We started taking a lot of open jumpers instead of uh, going back to our layups, free throws, open jumpers um, format for our offense. And um, we just we weren't making shots and, and they made us uncomfortable and you got to give them credit for that. But felt like we just really couldn't get into an offensive flow. Um, and we've got to do a better job of getting um, post touches and getting to the free throw line and then then taking those open jumpers. All right. You sit at eighth place in the standings. 
other than win, what do you have to do to climb up the standings? What does your team need to do better? Well, we've got to be more consistent offensively. We've got to be more consistent, period. Um, you know, you win one, you lose one, you win one, you lose one. As a coach, you know, that, that points to consistency. And uh, some of that's being on the road in youth, and some of it's just we've got to be better as a team. Um, and how do we do that? I think we've got to um, go back to offensively, what are we doing? Um, cutting hard passing to the open player, getting, take, passing up a good shot for a better shot. And all that sounds great, but it's really simple when you go back and you look at the games that we've been very good offensively. It's because we've done those things. You know, SFA Saturday, we turned the ball over 13 times in the first half, and that's very uncharacteristic of this team. We averaged 12.8, I think, for, for a whole game in conference. And, um, you know, we just we didn't value the basketball the way we needed to in order to give, us, give ourselves extra offensive possessions. And we've got to do that, especially on the road. And it'll be big for us on Thursday night. And um, I think that's our biggest focus is, is preparing for Southeastern on Thursday night. They're a very good team and um, have two interior players that can really score the basketball. And um, they're going to pound it inside, get to the free throw line, and we've got to defend without fouling and, and be able to rebound the basketball. All right. You have Southeastern this weekend in New Orleans. You have Southeastern on Thursday, New Orleans on Saturday. So break down Southeastern for us, and then after that, break down New Orleans. Um, well, Southeastern um, has you know, two interior players that can score the basketball. They, they do a nice job of looking high-low, really playing some pick-and-roll action with those two. And um, they hurt people on the offensive glass, and, and they get you deep and pin you and uh, get to the free throw line. Guards do a, a very good job of pushing in transition. They want to play fast and get into an up-tempo game. And we've got to control tempo. We've got to um, dictate. Um, things from our end of the floor of, of not going down and rushing quick shots, turning the basketball over and playing right into their hands. Defensively, we've got to keep them outside of the paint and not allow easy post touches and um, really force difficult shots and then limit them to one, one shot on each possession. Um, if we can do that, we can value the ball. I, I like our chances. Saturday, we'll go down to New Orleans and um, face a team that, that hasn't won this season, and that's always dangerous because, you know, at this point, Every team's hungry for a win, and, and I don't expect um, Keyshawn's bunch to be any different on Saturday. And we've got to prepare just like we would on Saturday or Thursday for Southeastern, um, and we'll be ready to go.